games. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years coming back, that's how, how it's done. Yeah, where well, you've been footballing, have you? <laughs> oh, you mean Sean, I saw your colleagues. Big hitters, eh? <laughs> right, Rob, what have we got? Right, <clears throat> let's crack on. Um, Here we go, football first. Football first. Um, Brennan, uh, VAR, it's back. we all think we asked you about VAR again. Arsene Wenger's had a <coughs> this week I don't, that's had a lot, of, a lot of publicity. He wants the offside law changed so that any, if any part of your goal scoring part of your body is onside, then you're onside. So if there isn't daylight, he thinks it's onside. I mean, look, I looked at the stats and Leicester have had as, almost as many as anybody else goals chalked off. I think it's three you've had chalked off for, mm. uh, for VAR. Um, what do you make of, of Wenger's view? Do you agree that, that, that this idea of daylight is a, is a good idea? Well, it's something to, to, to discuss. Um, I think the, we're probably sat here now in more controversy and, and VAR uh, and, and refereeing is what we've ever had. Um, and the whole idea was to make it easier and make it simpler for, uh, for the game. So, um, so probably one or two things need to happen. Yeah, they need to change the rules or you you make the technology better. Um, it, for me, it just it all seems a little bit complicated when I think that it, it, it can, you know, it surely has to be more simple, you know. I think there, there, there's a lot of decisions that this year that it's, there was offside. I think earlier on in the, the season, there was, I think everyone was clear on, on where it was. And if you were a millimetre off or on, you, you were still off. So for me, it's, I think we have to be careful. We don't complicate it even more. Um, I, I, I've tried to take the uh, the approach that you're either offside or you're not, and if you get it given against you, uh, even no matter how how close it is, you 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 have to accept it. Uh, so, um, but there's probably going to be discussions around it um, between now and, and the end of the season and at the end of the season. But uh, but yeah, it, it just seems to it just seems to be. Be, be a little bit more complicated than what it should be. Um, how are your players? How's the team news? How's Wilfred and Didi? You know, all the players are fine. Wilful, uh, he won't be available for the uh, for the weekend, so he's still uh, in a process to try and get fit. So, um, so yeah, we'll see how he is next week. How long do you think might he be available next weekend? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's no timeline on it. We just have to see how he how he progresses. Um, Apart from that, we're we're all we're all fine. Obviously, Papi Smendi's been out and Hamza's suspended. So, but apart from that, the the group are okay. Um, Ryan Bennett can actually feature in this mm. match day squad. I bet he's chomping at the bit. Does he go straight into the squad? As far as you're concerned, he's available for selection. Well, he's available for selection. I think that's uh, that's great for him. He, he's, he's obviously been in a few weeks now and uh, settled in really, really well. Into, into the squad so uh, no, we, we were delighted to, to get Ryan he's going to be an important player for us even if he doesn't play he's, his mentality around the squad is, is very very good so uh, so yeah so, so we'll look at that over the next 24 hours to see if he features or not um, I think you asked about Adam, Adam Lana last weekend so I don't want to labour that point but do you, are you pretty clear that there's going to be a lot of competition for his signature a lot of big clubs interested in it yeah I've seen a, a lot of stuff and, and around Adam and um, and that we've approached Liverpool and, and, and what not which obviously isn't the, the case so uh, but yeah Adam's a a wonderful player but not only that he's got a great attitude you know when I took him into Liverpool he he um, he was unfortunate early on with, with injuries, but he, he showed over his time there when he's fit and available that he's a he's a fantastic player. So um, so he's at the stage of his contract where uh, you know he'll he'll have options, I'm sure. So um, but certainly what has been out there over these last few days, it, it's not the case. Okay, so there hasn't been any contact with his representatives as far as you're concerned. Yeah. Thanks for clearing that up. Um, Manchester City have had a. <laughs> An interesting couple of weeks, an mm. um, interesting week. Do you, do you have some sympathy for them over how they've fallen foul of, of financial fair play? Well, I suppose I, I look more to, to Pep and to the players. Um, you know, when, you, you, when you're a manager at a club, you, you, work and you work together and you work in the, in, 
uh, with the board. So, uh, but you're obviously clearly there to to coach and manage the team. So, um, listen for me, it will galvanise them as a squad. You know these types of situations where there there's questions around the, the club. The, the, the players will become stronger for it. They, they'll show that spirit. I'm, I'm pretty much sure of that. And uh, and I want to show that no matter what the issues are, that they're still very, very talented players. So, um, so yeah, it's an ongoing process, of course. But uh, but I think for, for Pep and his team, they'll, they'll be very determined to finish the season as strong as they can in every competition they're in. I mean, Leicester clearly have very wealthy owners. Uh, and... and them alongside you are trying to push the club forward get to that next level um, does financial fair play make that more difficult from your perspective because you can't just go out and spend well it definitely does and I think that is the, the point that I think has been said a number of times before you know you're in a you want to improve you want to develop uh, you're in a process to do that um, but there's rules of which you have to adhere to so uh, so that's something here that the club are, are very much wary of uh, and that's why it's you know, a club like ourselves will be step by step trying to bridge a gap which is very very difficult uh, to, to the top six but we, we, we find different ways and, and, we, and we, we have an infrastructure that hopefully over time can, can do that and sustain that so um, it's always going to be tough but we, we always fight and, and work the best that we can to, to try and bridge that gap but it will always be, a, it will always be difficult Thanks Brendan <coughs> Hi Brendan, hope you're Hi. well. Um, you mentioned no Wilfred and Didi this weekend, no Hamza Chowdhury, no Papi Mendy either. How big a, a hole is that to fill in the team ahead of this weekend? Well, three excellent players and obviously uh, we have to find a strategy and a, and a plan to come up with a, with a game that can... Um, see is try and get to try and get the three points. So um, the three players, of course, have all featured wealth probably more than than most. Um, but all three uh, players give you that sort of defensive solidity, which is important in any team. But they're not available, so we we, we can't uh, worry so much about that. We just find a a plan that hopefully can uh, allow us to get the result. And we've got some players that are available and and ready to step in uh, if needed. I remember you telling us after the game up at the Etihad back in December that you you learnt lessons from that game. What have you taken from that over the over the weeks afterwards? Well, we were too passive in the game. I think that was that was that was pretty clear. Um, we we got a great start in the game, um, but we didn't we didn't press the game hard enough and well enough at times. Manchester, Manchester, a fantastic team that forced you back into into a defensive shape, uh, but you can still. You, they have to feel your shirt. They have to uh, feel the aggression of of the team, and uh, and that's something that we we spoke about after that game. Um, and then once you then have the ball, you have to have that ability to play quickly, and you know that you can have an opportunity that once you break the press, there's there's space there to to play in. But um, now that's always easier said than done against a, a top level team. However, um, it's something that we we spoke about after that game, and and that's something that will be be looking to put right in in this game. You ha- they they have to feel the the aggression, they have to feel the pressure and uh, and of course it has to be educated because you can't get stretched too much or else they have top level players that that can exploit the spaces but uh, but it's that balance between that press and aggression and being being compact and tight when you uh, when uh, when you haven't got it. And is that something maybe that you have a discussion with Ben Chilwell about? I mean, in that game, Merez against Chilwell, I think it's fair to say Chilwell had a, a very difficult time that day. Is that something you maybe talk about specifically with him or talk about uh, maybe specifics? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the job. It's the team. You know, it, it's it's not just Ben, it's the whole team collectively to get a result against a team like Manchester City and a you need to perform well and you need to uh, you need to have all 11 players you know in the team there's sort of obviously areas of the game specifically that will speak with with certain players because of their th- specific threats but uh, but yeah it has to be a collective and that's something that we've reinforced this week and again just going back to something I remember you saying after the Aston Villa defeat in the Carabao Cup that you 
you wanted to see an extra determination from your players again over the coming weeks after that have, have you seen that from your players yeah I think we've seen that in the last game you know if you think we, you're down you're playing the last 20 minutes away to a very good side that's done particularly well at home and against top teams uh, to play that last 20 minutes and show that determination and that resilience was was very pleasing so um, yeah but we're at a stage of the season now where uh, that focus and mentality is is, is is so important aligned with all your technical and tactical qualities but uh, but yeah the, the, the players have had a really really good week and um, they're very focused in the game and uh, it's second v third and we want to produce a performance that allows us to uh, to perform well and, and hopefully really push to get three points. Brendan, Thank you me. mentioned... Good afternoon. <clears throat> you mentioned aggression and the need for aggression against a team like Manchester City. You mm. used the word passive at the Etihad. Mm. How difficult is it to formulate the plan you say you're going to need without an aggressive player in Hamza Chowdhury and an aggressive, albeit not strong tackling player, but an aggressive in terms of his energy in Wilfred Ndidi? You seem to have lost quite a few aggressive players. Yeah, but I think it's, it's, it's in here. That's your strength. And your mentality, it, uh, you know, you, of course, if you, you you have certain players within the teams that give you that, naturally that's what they do. But every player, whatever position you play, there's a need for you to deny the opponent space, and it's not, you know, it's not just with the ball. You've got to show your quality. It's it's against the ball, and and a, and a team like Manchester City will certainly test that, you know. So um, so now. OK, you take out those players, like you say, it's their natural game. But for us and how we play and our identity, every player has to have that, you know, that ability to get up and get in contention with people, uh, to stop them playing. Uh, and then when they can't, you know, they've got to then get into that resting shape, but then set set the team up then to, to press it again well. So, um, so no matter how big or strong you are, you know, and, and I think Manchester City are a great example of that. You see some of their their players, you know, they're uh, you wouldn't say there some of them are six foot three, six foot four, and and heavily built. It's it's that willingness and hunger to go and get the ball, and uh, and and that's what's important. Just a bit of clarification on Wilfred Ndidi, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. and the nature of the injury. You've already mentioned that it's it's the same knee and, and maybe a reaction, but we've mm. seen videos of him seemingly training on social. And, and the fact that you're not sure it's that, uh, as to how long it's going to be, does that concern you? No, it's just not putting the timeline on it. And then we sat here giving you a uh, time and it may not be that. I think it's one where it's just he's, he's you know, virtually weight bearing and he's doing his work on the inside. So all of that's fine. But it's then you then have to progress that to going outside. And then you then from that you're progressing it when he can then join the team because then there's a different intensity to, to train with the team and then of course there's another intensity to play so we just want to make sure that he's absolutely right he's such a, an important player for us um, but this is his well-being as well we want to ensure that not just the short term but the longer term for him is, is right and that uh, they can come back into the uh, into the squad again and into the team and there's no reoccurrence and Wes Morgan's okay. Is he available for selection? Yeah, and that's yeah, all yeah. Okay Wes, Wes is fine. Yeah. Um, on Manchester City, in there, their UEFA ban pending appeal, and you've already mentioned it's pending appeal. Mm. Has that changed your mindset regarding how many Champions League spots are available? Do you, and is it easy to slip into a fifth's going to be a spot? So we now need to stay in the top five, lads. Have you have you adjusted that? <laughs> No, we haven't changed because for us it's irrelevant really. I think if you look at the, the day when it was announced, I think that was the whole uh, story around it. The fifth place is maybe up for grabs, but for us it's never been a consideration. I think for us we've always tried to finish as high as we possibly can, you know, and not use that as a cushion because it may not be there. Uh, so for us, we have to finish these last 12 games as strongly as we possibly can. And and we, we target at European football. Uh, so we're in a, a position which uh, the minimum we want to stay in. So um, so the, the, the fifth place doesn't really come into it. So we haven't had to readjust because it, it's never been in our in our conversation. Our conversation is to, to finish as strong as we can and uh, as high as we can. But you must, with 12 games to go, be targeting Champions League football by now, surely? Well, I think, again, like I say, it's finishing as high as we possibly can. 
and for that we've been in the position you know a lot of the season and we want to fight to, to be there you know like I said we're in we're in the top four we're in a great position um, but you have to earn the right and like I say our assessment will be at the end of the season so but our push is to to, to finish as high as we can does that mean you take seventh in the European spot if that's where we end up then that's where we end up that's where we haven't been good enough then to, to finish higher than that now for me I think we, we, we are better than that uh, but we have to show up you have to prove it in every game that you play so uh, so that's our focus really going into the uh, going into the, the end of the season that would take us above where we finished last season but uh, I always think at the last day of the season you end up where you deserve to be so uh, so we're hoping that we can can be higher than that um, your pl- plan for the weekend does Matty James maybe feature in that in terms of a midfielder is he ready for a, a midfield berth given the suspensions and injuries you've got could he feature in your match day squad in the Premier League at the weekend well we'll have a look at that <clears throat> over the next 24 hours he's certainly been training very very well his conditioning has gone great you know he's he's uh, really put a real focus on that he knows it's something that's very important to how I work you know you've got to be at that optimum level and, and he's at a very good level now he's, he's, he's been training uh, consistently now for a number of months he's got himself physically in a, in a really good place been very good in training and he's played in some games um, in the in the under 23 team so, um, so yeah it's certainly something for us to consider um, How do you get Jamie Vardy more chances Brendan and is that something you've been focused on because I think he's had five shots in the last half dozen games seemingly supply to Jamie is a challenge at the moment have you identified that and indeed is that something you've been trying to work on yeah it's a bit of both really it, it's it's helping Jamie understand you know the importance of him and his game uh, but then like you say the, the, the players around him creating those opportunities so um, so yeah but I've got no doubt he's he's been unfortunate when he had the injury uh, took a little bit of time to come back and uh, which is natural and then like you say that there's been some opportunities uh, but just hasn't quite uh, gone his way so um, but as long as, as Jamie works tirelessly as he, as he always does and he keeps making those runs and threatens him behind then th- there's absolutely no doubt he'll, he'll get back on the uh, on the goal trail again Last one from me and it is probably the most local question I may have ever asked you so to my national colleagues I apologise <laughs> Um in Leicester, we are the only county in the country that doesn't have its own flag. The county are designing a flag, as well as a listeners to BBC Radio Leicester, and asking our audience what should it's be the in only it. County the that only county have. that doesn't have its own flag that represents the the county in which the people uh, are, are housed. If you were to design a flag, <laughs> what should be on in part of a flag of Leicestershire, Brendan? You would naturally say a fox. You would say Old John would probably have to be on there somewhere. Uh, I don't know. Is there a BBC radio? Do they have a... A fox and Old John is, is probably... <laughs> is yeah, that not what you're looking for? That, 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 I think that's quite fair. Yeah. And excellent local knowledge from you. Well Absolutely. done. Thank uh, you. The best of luck on Saturday. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> He's not that old. <laughs> old, the old John, right? So you get the the very beautiful area of Charnwood, which is a, a pocket outside of Leicester City. So uh, towards the the north of, and it's a, a feature at Bradgate Park. So Bradgate's. Uh, one of the big uh, institutions of, of Leicestershire and uh, they have this great monument at the, the top of it called Old John. So it's a, it's a lot of reference. People come in from all around the... Top Yeah, they come all around the country. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I've been less, less than a year as well. I've been yeah, in. very impressed. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it's okay. Um, I've, I've got I've got an uh, afternoon. Um, I've got a slightly odd one, but not as odd as that, but slightly odd in that, <laughs> in that I'm going to ask you about a player who's not available the weekend, which is Hamza, just because I'm getting the chance to have a chat to him tomorrow. So it's a really open question. Yes, no worries. Just to sort of, you know, what 
for you are his qualities on the field and what qualities have you noticed off the field in him as a, as a person, as a player? Hamster child. Well, firstly, off the field, he's a, he's, a, he's a good boy. You know, he's, he's come through the system here, had his ups and downs with it, been out on lawn. And, um, but he's, he's a really, really good boy who wants to do the very best as he can as a player. And like all young players, they make mistakes, but he's, he's one that uh, he doesn't try and hide away from it. He recognises that. And uh, like I say, he's got a, got a lovely personality, you know, real genuine young guy. On the pitch, you see what he is. He's, uh, he's a player that wants, is happy to do all the dirty work for his team. Yeah. He's, um, he's aggressive in his, in his tackling, which he needs to be. That's his, that's his job covers the ground very quickly uh, he's getting better in reading the game and reading the tactical idea of, of the game and also he's getting better with the with the use of the ball you know I think that sometimes when you're when you're so good defensively at times when you grow up as a young player uh, sometimes that's all that gets focused on but at the top level of the game you need to be good in both you know you need to be able to take the ball pass the ball uh, and he's certainly getting better and better that every single day in training and and in the games so um so yeah he's a fantastic young player who's who's fitted really well into the squad obviously Wilf has played a lot of the games but when he's been asked to play he's done very very well and in his last game i thought he was very very unfortunate to have got sent off lovely thank you okay thank you brilliant well done Oh, sure. 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 Oh, sure.